piece which I do on my blog, Introscope. Um, I feature thought leaders, uh, people who have uh, built their personal brands over many years so that they can share their experiences and perspectives. So thank you for taking the time. Uh, before we get started, it would be great if you could introduce yourself to our viewers. Yeah, my, my name is Dave Carroll. I'm uh, a singer-songwriter uh, and, uh, I guess, uh, a social media, I've been called a social media innovator. Uh, in 2009, I released a song and a video in response to a bad customer service experience with United Airlines, and I called it United Breaks Guitars, and it was at the early days of social media. So uh, the video ended up becoming very popular very quickly and uh, became one of the more popular videos of, of the time. And it turned into a speaking career, and I found myself being a consumer advocate without any uh, thought or preparation for it. And that's what I've been doing for the last 10 years, uh, talking about customer service and, and uh, branding and storytelling around the world. Fantastic. I think you're being very modest, uh, Dave. I think you are known as the nicest guy in the business. <laughs> I, I can have read. <laughs> so how, how did that Monica come about? Uh, well, it, it really, it's, it's not through any effort other than just trying to be nice to people and uh, treating people as I would like to be treated myself. And um, it's, it's a nice thing to have on your brand, I guess, if people are saying that. Great. So, I mean, that's a great segue into personal branding because I think uh, being nice is also a great quality for being known as a personal brand. So what's your definition of a personal brand? I think the, your brand is the sum of the conversations being had about you. Uh, you can have your own op opinion, and we meet people all the time who think, I'm a great guy, or they, they can tell you what they think of themselves, but nobody else uh, thinks of them that way. And th that's not your brand. Uh, your personal opinion of yourself is not your brand. It's what the other people are saying about you. If you're in a room and mm -hmm. you walk around for a while and you leave, what people say about you when you leave is your brand. And you have influence over that, but that's mm -hmm. what I think your brand is. And so, I mean, obviously you are a personal brand in your own right, and now you are kind of an advocate of customer experience and advocacy. So, uh, you know, how do you, do you, how did you know at some point uh, that you were a personal brand? And, you know, what, what are some of those attributes people call out uh, when it comes to your name? Uh, that's a good question. So I've been a singer songwriter and a musician for 30 years now, cause I never stopped when United Breaks Guitars came out and, uh, I was very aware at the beginning that everybody <clears throat> uh, plays, likes music. A lot of people mm -hmm. like to sing music. Many, many people play it. Uh, mm -hmm. And some want to do it professionally. And only a very small number of people can actually make a living playing music. And, it's, mm -hmm. and I learned very quickly that uh, because I was being paid to sing when I really wasn't that good, that I knew it had less to do with talent and more to do with how you treat people. And uh, my brother Don and I, we started our band called Sons of Maxwell, mm -hmm. uh, named after our father. And mm -hmm. I say we weren't very good at the beginning for sure. And uh, but we did care about everybody who came in to see us. If we were playing in a bar and it was mostly empty, we spent time mm -hmm. talking to a few people who did come mm -hmm. and uh, and actually were grateful because we knew that those people had somewhere else they could have gone and they chose to invest their time in us. And I've never lost sight of that, that everybody who's interested in uh, spending time hearing what we had to say uh, mm -hmm. is sort of a friend to our brand and try to show them the respect. That's, that's a great word you use there, gratefulness. And so, you know, do personal brands need to really be, you know, so is, is that one of the traits or qualities? Because what I want to ask you also is, how does one go about building a personal brand? What are some of those steps? Uh, of course, you know, United Breaks Guitars came along the way, but what are some of the steps you took to build your personal brand as a musician, for example? So, so I would say that the, in terms of the United Brakes guitar story, the, I've never cared less about an outcome in, mm -hmm. in my life. But I, uh, when it came to the video, I did my best to make the best video that I could, but I never cared less about whether people watched it and I got to a million views. That was my goal, to get one million views with three videos that I promised cool. United right. and, uh, and ended up getting a million in four days. But the biggest lesson I learned was to enjoy the process along the way. So when mm -hmm. we made the video, I was enjoying the time with my friends, I enjoyed the whole process, and the result was a million people mm -hmm. watched it in four days. So building mm -hmm. your personal brand, I think, uh, it has to do with just small, simple things. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you, how would you want other people to see you? 
right. and be congruent and consistent in how you roll that out. And uh, and I, I re really believe that compassion is a fundamental value to building a personal brand that's worth worth owning. You know, there, right. there are a lot of brands everybody knows about, and I wouldn't want to have anything to do with those. Mm -hmm. But uh, to be the to be the type of a person or a brand that when you leave a room and people have good things to say about you, that requires compassion on your part. And that's a big fundamental part of uh, everything I stand for these days. Fantastic. And in your experience, and when you have been going about you know, music and other aspects of your life, who are some of those, you know, if you can name a couple of names of personal brands you look uh, look out to and admire? So, you know, who would they be? Uh I'm not really a country music artist, but I've always had a lot of respect for someone like Garth Brooks. He's a huge name. He's known around the world. And uh, while other people were looking at doing world tours and charging $200 a ticket, he was doing tours charging $40 a ticket. And okay. uh, and as, as a result, he was selling out everywhere he was going. And mm -hmm. he was selling a lot of t-shirts and a lot of merchandise at every show because mm -hmm. he kept the ticket price down. But I think the people spent about the same as what they would have spent at a higher price ticket and not left with a t-shirt and uh so it's about uh i respect artists like that that have done that okay and you know, so i was talking about the steps you go about building a brand but in the journey how how do you know that yes you're progressing or you're not progressing what what are those signs which tell you uh again it's a, my, i guess my career as a musician is a metaphor for uh branding on all types of business. But when you're you're standing on stage, you know that you're doing the right thing when people are standing up and dancing to your music or clapping or asking you to come back for an encore. The, right. uh, you can walk off and say, what a great show I did, but if nobody cared, then maybe you should re, you know, uh, revisit what you did and how you could do it better. And brands, especially now with, with social media, the, it's mm -hmm. got a dark side and a positive side. On the positive side, you get instant feedback. You can really understand what people are saying and hearing and, and analyze that and have word clouds and everything that sort of define what the conversations are about you. So you can use that as your guide. Um, right. So that's what I think what brands can do. And along your journey, what, what kind of challenges did you face while you were building your personal brand, so to speak? So, uh, you know, what, what are the challenges? What, do you, what kind of techniques do you to overcome it? Uh, so, so again, I sort of had two careers. I had the music career and then the United Brace guitar, Guitars career. Mm -hmm. uh, the challenges that uh, musicians, all musicians have, is how do you break through? Uh, mm -hmm. How do you pop, uh, make your stuff pop when everybody else is saying, I've got a great song, can you listen to mine as well? And, right. uh, and so, it, again, it's, uh, I think what makes one musician rise above another isn't the song itself, it's how you interact with the people that are considering listening. And if you... Mm -hmm walk around in your audience and say, thanks, thanks. what's your name? How, are, how did you come to be here? Well, can I play another song for you? You're, you're being of service, right? right. And that's, that's what crosses over into the United Breaks Guitars world and to every other brand in the world is that the, I think the number one purpose of every brand, personal or business, is to be of service. Mm. And you're thinking more of how, how can I bring uh, the value that I have and give it to somebody else? If you can have an answer to that question, you'll have a stronger brand than the people that are saying, how can I extract $20 from that person right now, right? right. That, you, you made an interesting point about two different careers as a musician and someone who's created this video which is viral. Now, uh, how, you know, how difficult is it or how, how proud are you to be associated with something like an activist? Because in some sense, you are an activist uh, you know, he going head on against a corporation. And in some sense, making a difference because it, they took notice of you, you were able to get attention to the cause. So, you know, how difficult is it to demarcate between these two? Uh, seamless for me, it's completely okay. seamless. And, and that's one of the interesting things I found out after the video went viral, people, and I started doing speaking and I wrote a book and uh, mm -hmm. people would say, so you're not a musician anymore, what it's like, what's it like to leave that behind? And I'm like, I'm not leaving it behind. I sing it every presentation I do. I, I play my guitar every day. Uh, right. There's transition for me, and so my to answer one of your earlier questions, my my challenge in building a brand for United Breaks Guitars is to bring along my music and make sure people know that I'm still that guy. Uh, right. I'm I'm all of those things. I'm a musician who also cares mm -hmm. about his instrument, who gets upset when people break it. So I tell right. a story. About it. 
and right. and everybody is like that, right? So we're 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 not as simple as as people would like us to be. Sometimes we're a little bit more complex, but mm -hmm. on the simple side, we all just want to be respected and cared for, and uh, right. that's what to ask for. When brand, and that's what brands have the ability uh, to control. You can't control what everybody says, but I can control if I care about you and mm -hmm. uh, treat you with respect. Right. So I, I did uh, look at your TEDx video, which you have on YouTube, and you talked about family and values and how deeply that means to you. Now, for people who build their personal brand, sometimes uh, they go so much into building their career that they forget their family or they go too much about, you know, building, getting money that they forget about other things in life. So what's your, you know, what are some of the things that you probably gained or lost along your journey so far? Uh, well, I mean, my accountant would, would disagree, but I think maybe one of the, one of the good things that happened with United Brace Guitars is I didn't make anywhere near as much money as people think I did. <laughs> if I had made millions, maybe it would have changed me. But the, but the fact is, is uh, uh, I guess my lack of financial success has kept me humble enough to always appreciate the people around me. And um, uh, I mean, I'm not complaining. I've done okay. But but uh, it, uh, it's there's always been a balance, a sort of a humbling thing. And I've had enough bad gigs in my day. I played mm -hmm. to empty rooms. I played to rooms with two people that mm -hmm. didn't clap after a song. Like, you know, they just watch it. They in the days of smoking, they would just smoke <laughs> and they would watch to see if, if you would crumble at their lack of indifference. Or anything, right. <laughs> and uh, those are humbling experiences. So I really appreciate a good gig when I have one. If I'm in a great uh, venue full of people and they like the message, that feels mm -hmm. great. But I never take it for granted because I know what the opposite of that is. Right. And uh, it's, it's really just about trying to be congruent, appreciating the people that have helped you, appreciating where you want to go mm -hmm. and uh, and be kind, be kind to the people in your family. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if you were to give advice to someone who's starting out uh, from scratch, trying to build their personal brand, it could be a student, it could be entrepreneur, it could be anyone. So what's your advice? How would you guide them? Everybody has a story to tell. That's one of the key messages I have. We all have an interesting, not just a story, but we have an interesting story to tell. If, right. if it's not standing out, it has probably more to do with your effectiveness at telling a positive story and all that can be changed. You can learn how to do it more effectively. Uh, mm -hmm. And and uh, I guess as a bit of a sideline, uh, our body language and how we present ourselves, uh, the audiences pick up on that in little imperceptible ways. So mm -hmm. it might just be a little fine fine tuning on how you present yourself and it changes everything because the audience feels more relaxed and then they're open to the message and then you become more trustworthy. Right. And, uh, but in terms of building uh, from scratch, I would say you have to decide what your story is, what value it is to somebody else and go mm -hmm. tell it and, and not just tell it, but be it. So if you say I'm, uh, I'm kind and compassionate towards everybody, but uh, you're not acting that way. Your business model, if you're selling products that you know are substandard to people, but mm -hmm. and you're just trying to get the sale and you don't care if they come back, you can't have a brand that says, I believe in customer service and supporting my product, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's worse. It's worse uh, to, to say that and not be it than to not say it at all. So you have to be congruent in what you say. Being congruent means uh, being the person you say you're going to be, having the service that you promised, and maybe right. going beyond that. Fantastic. And you know, when when you reflect on your journey, is there is there one thing that you'd like to change or do differently uh, if you were to kind of look back over the years? Um, in terms of uh, uh, the music career, or even with the United Brakes Guitar stuff, everything was sort of uh, I was doing these things with no expertise. I just right. uh, I wanted to be a musician, so my brother and I just started looking for gigs, and we made many, many mistakes along the way. But the but I think building a strong brand means if you're congruent and, uh, as I say, compassion is big. Right. Uh, if you're if you're look if, with the best of intentions and you're giving your best, uh, a, a strong brand can withstand mistakes. That's the thing, is that yeah. you can withstand mistakes and missteps if you're congruent in your brand, uh, because the brand is the thing that goes beyond. Uh, the surface. We all make sur superficial mistakes, but uh, people will forgive you if you are a strong brand. 
and you communicate that. So. Got it, got it. And uh, you know, right now we are going through a pandemic, and you know there are crises across the world. You know, what what's your advice for personal brands when they when they think about such scenarios? Uh, what should they be doing? Should they be doing something differently, or should they be, you know, pausing what they do? So, what's your advice? Uh, I don't know if I have advice, but it's more of an observation that that the mm -hmm. pandemic has been an interesting experience because when you combine the fact that we have uh, a socially connected world with social media, we the world has never been so connected. Right. And uh, there's never been a time because of that and because of how quickly we can interact with each other, which means on the dark side that uh, viruses can spread, spread globally almost instantly. Mm -hmm. The world mm -hmm. has never had a moment where the entire world has simultaneously agreed we have a common problem and we have a common solution that we have to address. Right. And that's it's even more more significant than climate change because there's right. there really is no side to it. We all agree. Yeah. And so what I've been noticing is that some companies uh, mm -hmm. are showing up and the thing that they've had to do to earn a living is gone for temporarily mm -hmm. at least. They have to had to shut down, but they still step up and say, what else can I be? They ask the question in this challenge, what else can I be and how right. can I be of service? To my Absolutely. earlier point, that a brand has to be uh, of service to people. And the, there are brands that are doing other things that they never would have thought of doing before. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a company here in, in uh, the East Coast of Canada mm -hmm. that uh, had done lots of business in China with their primary business and they used those contacts to get personal protective masks and right. that sort of thing. To, uh, here, they use those contacts to be of service to people and actually save lives and people will know their name and they will uh, respond when they have a choice, which company right. would you rather do business with? The one who just shut down or the one who stood up? Yeah. yeah. Got it. Um, so right now there are you know a lot of youngsters who think that you can be a one-time hit on YouTube by creating some viral video. So you know what what's your you know recommendations for them how they when they start thinking about social media and generally personal brands overall? I wrote a blog a while back called, I think I called it, uh, uh, it's a mistake to put uh, the count before the cart. They say the, <laughs> the, horse before, the cart nice. before the horse. And, uh, and so if you're starting from the perspective of, uh, I'm doing this to be famous, you're mm -hmm. immediately fundamentally flawed. That if mm -hmm. you're, if you're uh, in, with United Breaks Guitars, I didn't do it to be famous. I didn't think I would be. That's why I said I would do three videos, not one, because I thought I might need three to get to a million. Okay. And and uh, if you look at the video, we're having fun that day. I brought my friends together. And like I said, I never cared less about an, uh, an outcome, but we had a great time doing it. And so everyone tried their best. And the product we ended up with was right. it, it looked uh, a little campy, but there were professionals doing their doing their part. Right. And as a result, the video did did very well. So uh, I think if that's a flaw that a, a lot of young people have right now is that they get caught up in the vanity of social media mm. and think, I'll just be YouTube famous and then everything good will happen to me instead of not having any meat on the bone before they start. Right, right. Fantastic. So as we wrap up, I uh, wanted to ask you, what's your recipe for personal branding success or what's your mantra? If there was a one short statement that you would use. Um, gee. Uh, I guess the, it would have to do with the keys that I talked about earlier, uh, being congruent and compassionate and consistent in your brand. Do, do those things and the recipe is you will, you will find the answer along the way, right. but if you have those fundamentals, they, those will always guide you in the right direction. Fantastic. This is brilliant. It's, it's been so enriching and enlightening talking to you. I mean, I'm sure our viewers will really, really take away immense amount of insights from your 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 thoughts here. So thank you so much for taking the time to do this, Dave. Appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. I'll just stop.